Hey gem lovers, welcome to another incredible journey into the world of nature's most precious treasures. Today, we're diving deep underground to discover the hidden story of Imperial Topaz, one of Earth's rarest and most captivating color gemstones. You've probably seen these stunning golden pink gems in luxury jewelry stores, but have you ever wondered how these fiery treasures form deep within our planet? Or what incredible journey they take from hidden crevices in ancient rock to the gleaming showcases of high-end jewelers? Well, you're about to find out exactly how millions of these breathtaking gems are born, discovered, and transformed into the dazzling stones that captivate collectors worldwide. Before we journey into the Earth's crust, let's understand what makes Imperial Topaz so special. This isn't just any gemstone. It's literal royalty in the mineral kingdom. What defines true imperial topaz is its mesmerizing golden pink color, a unique combination that occurs when trace amounts of chromium infiltrate the stone's crystal structure during formation. This distinctive hue is why imperial topaz earned its royal name. These gems were once reserved exclusively for Russian czars and Brazilian emperors, even featuring prominently in imperial crown jewels. But here's what makes them truly extraordinary. While regular yellow topaz is relatively common, genuine imperial topaz with that perfect golden pink fire represents less than half a percent of all topaz found worldwide. We're talking about one of the rarest colored gemstones on the planet. So how do millions of these gems hide underground and what incredible forces of nature and human ingenuity does it take to bring them into the light? Let's find out. Every imperial topaz begins its journey deep within the Earth's crust in a process that takes not years, not decades, but millions of years. The story starts with magma, the molten rock that flows beneath our feet. As this magma slowly cools within the Earth, something magical happens. Hydrothermal fluids, essentially superheated water mixed with various minerals, begin to circulate through the cooling rock. These aren't just any fluids though. They're exceptionally rich in fluorine, aluminum, and silicon, the essential ingredients needed for topaz formation. These mineral-rich fluids infiltrate cavities and cracks in igneous rocks, particularly in structures called pegmatites and rhyolites. Think of pegmatites as nature's crystal laboratories, large crystalline formations where minerals have the perfect conditions to grow slowly and reach impressive sizes. The magic happens when these fluids begin to cool and crystallize over incredibly long periods. The aluminum and silicon atoms arrange themselves into a specific crystal structure, while the fluorine helps facilitate this orderly arrangement. With enough time and the right conditions, these elements form the aluminum silicate crystals we know as topaz. But why does this happen specifically in places like Brazil's Minas Gerais region, home to the world's finest imperial topaz? The answer lies in unique geological conditions that occurred millions of years ago. This region experienced distinctive tectonic activity that created fluorine-rich granite veins along fault lines, essentially perfect pathways for those mineral-rich fluids to travel and crystallize. It's like nature set up specialized gem factories beneath certain mountains, with Brazil winning the geological lottery for imperial topaz production. While most topaz forms through this magmatic process, nature always has surprises in store. In rare cases, imperial topaz can also form through metamorphic processes, where existing rocks transform under extreme heat and pressure. During massive mountain building events, when continental plates collide, incredible forces reshape existing rock layers. Under these extreme conditions, minerals can recrystallize into new forms, occasionally producing topaz and schists or gneiss, metamorphic rocks that have experienced intense pressure cooking by geological forces. These metamorphic topaz deposits often have different mineral companions than their magmatic cousins. While magmatic topaz frequently associates with minerals like quartz and feldspar, metamorphic topaz might be found alongside fluorite, tourmaline, and cassiterite in vein deposits. The geological environment where topaz forms ultimately influences its characteristics, from color intensity to crystal size and clarity. It's nature's recipe book, with slight variations producing dramatically different results. Finding imperial topaz isn't like picking up seashells on a beach. These precious crystals hide hundreds of feet underground 
requiring determination, expertise, and sometimes a bit of luck to uncover. Prospectors and geologists look for specific clues that might indicate topaz deposits. Sometimes weathering and erosion have already done some of the work. Washing topaz crystals into stream beds, where they can be found through alluvial mining, essentially sifting through sediment and gravel in search of gems. This is similar to gold panning, but focused on the distinctive luster and shape of topaz crystals. However, the richest deposits require hard rock mining, digging directly into pegmatite veins where the crystals first formed. In Brazil's historic Ouro Preto region, miners use a combination of techniques that have evolved over centuries. Traditional methods involve hand tools, pickaxes, shovels, and chisels, allowing miners to work carefully around crystal pockets to avoid damaging the precious gems. For larger operations, controlled explosives help break through the hard surrounding rock, followed by careful extraction of any exposed crystal pockets. Modern operations might employ heavy machinery for removing overburden, the non-gem-bearing rock above the deposit, but the final approach to gem-bearing pockets often returns to careful hand extraction. This delicate balance between efficiency and preservation represents one of the mining industry's great challenges. The work isn't without significant risks. Underground mines face flooding risks, especially during Brazil's rainy season. Unstable rock layers can lead to cave-ins if not properly supported. And perhaps most challenging for gemstone mining specifically is preserving crystal integrity during blasting and extraction. A broken crystal can lose much of its value. The mining industry faces increasing scrutiny regarding its environmental footprint and labor practices, issues that responsible consumers are increasingly concerned about. In the topaz mining sector, operations range from small artisanal miners working claims by hand to larger corporate operations with industrial equipment. These different scales of operation often come with different approaches to worker safety and environmental protection. Artisanal miners may have deep local knowledge and mining traditions passed down through generations, but might lack access to modern safety equipment or stable income. Corporate operations might offer better safety protocols, but sometimes at the cost of local employment opportunities. The good news is that modern mining operations increasingly implement eco-innovations to minimize their environmental impact. Water recycling systems help reduce consumption of this precious resource, especially important in mining regions that may face water scarcity. Land rehabilitation efforts aim to restore mined areas to productive use after extraction is complete. The most responsible operations now consider the entire life cycle of their mining activities, from initial exploration to eventual mine closure and site restoration. For consumers who care about the provenance of their gemstones, these ethical considerations are becoming as important as the four C's of gemstone quality. When rough imperial topaz emerges from the earth, it's far from the dazzling gem you might see in jewelry. The journey from rough crystal to polished gemstone requires expert eyes, steady hands, and generations of knowledge. The first step in this transformation is careful sorting and valuation. Expert gemologists examine each rough crystal, looking for several key factors that determine its potential value. Color grading is perhaps the most critical aspect of imperial topaz valuation. The distinctive golden pink hue that defines true imperial topaz results from trace elements in the crystal, specifically chromium. When light interacts with these chromium impurities, it produces the warm, sunset-like color that collectors prize. By contrast, common yellow topaz generally contains iron impurities instead, resulting in a different color profile. The most valuable imperial topaz displays a perfect balance of golden yellow and pinkish red with rich saturation throughout the stone. Stones that show more yellowish or brownish tones are considered less valuable, while those with prominent pink or red flashes command premium prices. Clarity assessment comes next. Like most gemstones, imperial topaz can contain various inclusions, internal features that affect how light travels through the stone. These might include fingerprints, two-phase inclusions containing both liquid and gas bubbles, growth tubes, or mineral inclusions. While some inclusions are accepted in colored gemstones, those visible to the naked eye significantly reduce value. Size matters too. 
Larger crystals of gem quality are exponentially rarer and more valuable. A two-carat imperial topaz might be worth far more than twice the value of a one-carat stone of identical quality. Once a rough crystal has been evaluated, it moves to the cutting stage, where master lapidaries transform raw potential into brilliance. This art requires not just technical skill, but an intuitive understanding of each individual crystal. The lapidary begins by studying the rough stone carefully, planning a cutting approach that will maximize both size and optical performance. Imperial Topaz presents specific challenges due to its cleavage plane, a direction in which the crystal can split cleanly if struck. Cutters must orient their work to avoid putting pressure along this plane or risk splitting the valuable rough. The most common cutting styles for Imperial Topaz include oval, emerald cut, and cushion cuts. These styles balance maximizing the stone's fire, how it breaks light into rainbow colors, with preserving as much weight as possible from the rough crystal. The oval cut is particularly popular as it accentuates the gem's rich color while minimizing weight loss during cutting. The cutting process involves multiple stages, beginning with sawing, dividing larger rough pieces, followed by grinding, establishing the basic shape, and then faceting, cutting the precise angles that create brilliance. Final polishing brings out the gem's natural luster. Some imperial topaz undergoes heat treatment to enhance its color, a controversial practice in the gem industry. Careful heating can sometimes deepen pink tones or remove unwanted brownish hints. While common, this enhancement isn't always disclosed to buyers, raising ethical questions about transparency in the gem trade. The difference between an average cut and a masterful one can dramatically affect a stone's value. A well-cut imperial topaz displays maximum brilliance, with color evenly distributed throughout the stone and no dead spots where light fails to return to the viewer's eye. Once cut and polished, imperial topaz enters a global market where gems may change hands multiple times before reaching their final destination. This journey often spans continents and involves numerous specialists. After leaving Brazilian mines, Rough stones typically travel one of several paths. Some are sold directly to cutting houses, many in Jaipur, India, which has established itself as a global center for color gemstone cutting. Others go through mineral dealers who specialize in collector specimens or supply gem cutting operations. The highest quality rough often appears at specialized gem auctions in cities like Hong Kong, Geneva, or Bangkok, where dealers compete for exceptional material. These auctions set market trends and establish benchmark prices for exceptional quality stones. Once cut, the gems travel again to jewelry manufacturers, private collectors, or high-end retailers. Each step in this journey adds to the final price as each participant in the supply chain adds their expertise and takes their profit margin. Some of the most remarkable Imperial Topaz specimens end up in museums or private collections rather than jewelry. The famous Marbella Imperial Topaz, weighing an astounding 1,680 carats, represents one such treasure, showcasing the extraordinary potential size of these crystals when nature provides perfect growing conditions. Throughout history, Topaz has accumulated rich cultural significance across different civilizations. Ancient Greeks believed Topaz could increase strength and prevent disease, in medieval times, topaz was thought to dispel enchantments and improve eyesight. Imperial topaz specifically became associated with royalty, not just because of its name, but because its golden pink color evoked the warmth of the sun, traditionally associated with divine power and royal authority. This symbolism made it a natural choice for crown jewels and royal regalia. In modern times, topaz serves as November's birthstone, representing qualities of strength, wisdom, and healing. Many believe it promotes creativity and concentration, perhaps explaining why artists and writers throughout history have favored these gems. Beyond symbolic value, Imperial Topaz has practical significance for communities near mining regions. In areas like Ouro Preto, Brazil, gem mining provides economic opportunities and preserves traditional skills and knowledge passed through generations. Tourism centered around gemstone mining history further supports these communities. Despite their enduring appeal, 
Imperial Topaz faces several challenges that may affect availability and pricing in coming decades. Overmining presents perhaps the most significant concern. Historically rich veins in traditional mining regions show signs of depletion after centuries of extraction. While new discoveries occasionally occur, the most accessible deposits have largely been worked through, leaving deeper, more challenging extractions that increase costs and environmental impacts. This scarcity creates market pressure that synthetic alternatives seek to address. Laboratory-created Imperial Topaz simulants, typically colored glass or synthetic corundum with topaz-like properties, have entered the market. While these lack the geological history and rarity that make natural gems valuable to collectors, they offer similar appearance at lower price points for fashion jewelry. Climate change introduces additional uncertainty to mining operations. Extreme weather events, particularly in Brazil's increasingly unpredictable rainy season, can flood mines or trigger landslides that disrupt production. These disruptions affect not just gem availability, but the livelihoods of mining communities. Despite these challenges, the fundamental appeal of Imperial Topaz remains unchanged. As with many natural resources, increasing scarcity may ultimately enhance the value of exceptional specimens, particularly those with documented provenance from historic mining regions. For collectors and jewelry enthusiasts, these trends suggest that investment quality Imperial Topaz may become increasingly desirable as new production becomes more limited. The gems that have already been mined, cut, and preserved in collections may represent an increasingly finite resource. From deep within the Earth's crust to the world's most elegant jewelry collections, Imperial Topaz represents one of nature's most remarkable achievements. These golden pink crystals, born through geological processes spanning millions of years, capture something truly magical, the perfect combination of rarity, beauty, and natural history. What makes these gems especially remarkable is that each one tells a unique story. The specific conditions that created it, the miners who discovered it, the artisans who transformed it, all leave their mark on the final gem. No two imperial topaz stones are identical, each representing nature's one-of-a-kind artistry. Next time you glimpse one of these fiery gems in a jewelry display or museum collection, you'll know the extraordinary journey it took. From molten rock to mineral-rich fluids, from crystal growth to careful extraction, from expert cutting to its final setting. It's a journey spanning millions of years and thousands of miles, resulting in one of Earth's most captivating treasures. The question remains, which of Earth's geological wonders should we explore next? Are you curious about Emerald's hidden green worlds, or perhaps Sapphire's blue depths? Let me know in the comments below which gemstone you'd like to discover next. And remember, the next undiscovered Imperial Topaz might be hiding beneath your feet right now. Geology never sleeps, and Earth continues its patient work of creating beauty deep underground. Who knows what treasures remain to be discovered? Thanks for joining me on this sparkling adventure through the world of Imperial Topaz. If you enjoyed learning about these magnificent gems, hit that like button and subscribe for more journeys into Earth's most precious secrets.